Hey guys, I'm going to give you a quick, very quick, um, this is going to be level one of how to use a flash as far as how to adjust the power to get the lighting correct. These are some of the things that you're going to want to know. Um, on our flash, we actually have three things that we can adjust on this flash. We're going to do everything manual for now just so you can learn it. Uh, some of the flashes have auto abilities. You can put them right on your camera and the camera will take care of everything for you and then you have an exposure compensation in the camera for your flash so you can overpower it or underpower it but for this purpose we're going to kind of learn the flash and we're going to go manual so on a flash we've got a zoom now our zoom is going to tell the flash how narrow a beam to shoot and on most flashes the actual light will go in and out in order to adjust that now if you zoom to um, if you zoom very far in, and you would want to do that if you were using like an 85 millimeter lens or something, and uh, you wouldn't need to waste a lot of the flash power by shooting it very wide. You're just going to have flash light going all over the place, and you really only need it into a narrow beam. Also, if you're using these behind the subject and you wanted some accent light, you're going to want to zoom these in. You might even put a grid over it just to give it even more of a narrow beam like a 5, 10, 15 degree grid on it. Now, um, once we have our zoom taken care of, so if you're shooting wide and you have a large subject, you want to be wide, and if you're shooting in or an accent light, um, you don't want to waste all that flash power, then go ahead and zoom in. After we do that, we have the actual flash power. Now, these are normally uh, in fractions, 1 64th, 1 32nd, 1 16th, up to full power, which is a 1 to 1, and we can adjust the power uh, as needed. Now one thing to keep in mind as you do that it's not that the flash is pumping out a brighter light it's it's really only the same level of light what it's doing is keeping the light open for a longer period of time so if you want to uh, have a, a larger amount of light reaching the sensor of the camera it's gonna flash and keep the flash powered for a longer period of time so that's gonna use up a little more battery and also that's going to increase the duration. So most of the time that's not a problem. Uh, even a flash on full power will shoot at a 500th of a second. Most of them some a 250th of a second at full power. So you're going to be able to keep your subject still pretty much no matter what you're shooting. Now if you're shooting something moving and, uh, and it's dark outside and you want to light them completely with a flash, you're probably going to need to keep your flash duration down a little bit. Most flashes will shoot very, very high speed, like a six thousandth of a second, some a fifteen thousandth of a second, uh, if you're doing it at very low power, like a sixty-fourth of a power. Now this one won't go that flash, or that fast, but a lot of the Canon models will, or Nikon models will. And so if you wanted to do things like uh, you're shooting a droplet of water and you wanted to capture it as it's falling, and you flash lit it the entire way, if you shot that at very low power with flashes, it'll freeze it at 15,000th of a second, say, which is way faster than your shutter on your camera goes. And so that's going to lead to a much sharper picture for fast moving shots. Now, keep in mind, if there is any other light, like natural light in the picture, you're going to have an issue because your shutter is not going to shoot that fast. And so it's not going to stop the motion that's not lit entirely by the flash. But that's kind of another subject and we'll get more in depth if you guys would like. So after we do that, the third thing that we can adjust is the distance between the flash and your subject. The closer it is, it's going to light more and the further it is, it's going to light less. Now that is an inverse square law. So if you um, double, if you have the distance to your subject, you're actually going to multiply by double that as far as the amount of light that's going to reach your subject. So if you wanted to double the amount of light um, that reaches your subject, you would just have the distance uh, between you and your subject, and then you'll get the same amount of light um, from that. Now on your camera, we do have some settings that will alter the power of the flash. So for example, if I change my ISO on my camera, that is going to increase all light levels. That's going to increase light levels from natural light as well as all my flashlight is going to be increased. So if we want to increase both, that's the way to do it. Also, when we're dealing with aperture, if I shoot at 
Uh, if I'm shooting at 2.8 and then I want more light and I shoot maybe at 1.8, then, um, then we're actually going to be increasing the amount of light by both natural light and the light of our flash when we do that. Now I say that because our shutter is completely different. Uh, in most cases, you have to shoot at a 250th of a second or less when you're shooting with a flash. Um, on some full frame cameras, you really even need to stay at a 200th of a second or slower. And the reason for that is because you're going to have issues with the communication between the camera and the flash and the duration of the flash. And you're going to have a shutter close before the flash has lit the photo. And so you can, we can go into more depth if you have any questions, let me know. But basically what that means is you're going to have to shoot at a 250th or a 200th of a second or slower with all flash photography. Now, I say that because let's say I wanted, um, if I adjust my shutter speed, I'm only controlling natural light in that the flash is shooting faster than the shutter and therefore even if I increase my shutter I, or decrease my shutter, I'm not going to change the light level of the flash. So. If I'm shooting a scene and I look at it and I'm saying, okay, my natural light is a little bit too bright, but my flash is perfect. Well, I can just shoot with a little faster shutter speed. As long as I don't go over a 250th of a second, I'm fine. That's going to lower my ambient temperature, but keep my flash level exactly the same. So that's a great tool to begin to alter the difference in levels between your flash and the camera without actually having to go to the flash and dial it down. Now if you have a set of pocket wizards, um, a lot of them will let you uh, actually alter the power of the flash from the trigger, but these are um, some cheaper um, units and, and they actually don't have anything on these triggers, so you have to actually go to the flash in order to change the power from it. So, uh, other than that though, these are, these are great flashes. This is a YN560 and the trigger is the RF603C and they work very very well you just have to adjust them on the unit and that was actually pretty loose on there so those are the major things that we can change with those and so between knowing all of those settings we can choose to adjust the power and the ratios between our ambient light and our natural light with that now another thing is if you wanted to kill ambient light completely and flash light something, I guarantee that in almost all cases except you know daylight, but your flash can overpower normal interior lights for example. So if you were to turn up your flash all the way, shoot at ISO 100, um, close down your f-stop a little bit, and then what you're going to do is play with your shutter speed. So you're going to get your flash settings right by adjusting your ISO aperture and the flash power and the distance between that and your subject. Once you do that, I normally start at about a hundredth of a second shutter speed. That'll freeze just about everything and then that gives me room to close it down even more and to shoot faster and uh, that will kill my ambient temperature or my ambient um, light much quicker. And so that's normally the best way to kill ambient light, is just to increase your shutter to 250th. Um, another way is to start out by just shooting, and shoot and adjust your settings until it's black. Keep your shutter at 250th, and when the ambient light is completely gone, now you can begin to adjust your flash power to get that perfect. Because your ambient is already killed by shooting at a 250th of a second, 100 ISO, you might have to shoot at a at like f8 or f16 in order to get rid of the light completely. But your flash, most flashes can overpower that. So that was a basic rundown on how to control light levels with a flash. Uh, we'll probably go into some more advanced tutorials later just to give you guys some help if you want some. And let me know if you have any questions or if you'd be interested in any uh, anything else being answered in a later video. Thanks.